Hi, Al Williams here. This is the rather convoluted setup for the serial port multiplexer. On the one side, there's a STM32F411 with a single USB serial port going over to a Linux box. But the software on the chip thinks that there's four different ports, and it could be more. It just happens to be four in this kind of contrived example. And on the Linux side, those are all split out to pseudo terminals that make it appear that there's actually four physical ports. So let's see how it works. The Linux software that makes this work is called TTY Mux. You can find the source code for that in the actually on GitHub, and there's a link to that on the Hackaday post. Uh, this is defining four channels. Each one has an ID number and an optional symbolic link. Most of these symbolic links are in my home directory for some reason, except the last one is just in the current directory. So there's a port for the analog console, which is just going to have an analog reading periodically, a digital console that's going to have a periodic digital reading. Again, pretty contrived example. There's a debugging log, and then there's a command port where we can issue commands, and there's the real serial port, dev TTY ACM0. So when we start this, it shows us the different PTYs, the different pseudo terminals that are being used for each channel. And it shows us the link, if we have one, that we can use. So let's go over here to the right. We'll start the analog channel up. You can see it's just periodically reading the A to D. And then the digital is reading the switch on the black pill board. You'll notice there's a little tag here that says none. Uh, that's a note. I'll show you more about that in a second. Here's the debugging port where it shows us which loops are being run in, any other debugging messages we might want to have in there. And we'll open up the command terminal. And from the command terminal, I can ask for help and see what all the commands are that I can do. Uh, you can't see the LED on the board, but if I did the blink rate, I could change that. But I can also change the rate of the analog and digital samples. And I can set the note over there on the digital screen. So let's try one of those. Let's change the analog to go every two seconds, let's say. And so you'll notice up at the top right, that slowed down quite a bit. And you can see in the debug log that now there's a bunch of digital loops for every analog loop. Uh, the note command, if you look over on the digital console, the one on the center, now says Hackaday instead of none, and you could change that to whatever you want within reason. So pretty contrived example, but clearly we've got what amounts to four serial ports that are all opened up with PicoCom, which is just a standard Linux terminal software. It could be anything, or it could be your own software, uh, or it could be a mix of those things. And they all think they have an individual serial port that's operating, but it's all going to that one box. Uh, just to complete it out, I mean, if you look at the digital window, I'll operate the switch, and you can see it's reading that. That's not surprising. And there's a pot on the digital, or excuse me, the analog input. And so as I twist the pot around, you can see the voltage reading change there. So be sure to check out the post and the codes on GitHub. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.